waiting for Christ's second coming. Amo na nga, amo na nga yung title sa ating mensahe sa inyo ka. Kaga, can't help but to recall my experience uh, four months ago nung uh, na-lockdown ko sa Manila. And, uh, grabe itong experience no? Amo ito sa pinakalawig na napalayo ko sa aking family. Kaya sa inyo. No? Three months. No? Almost three months. Kaga may I, I remember nga may ticket ako at the time may ina-anticipate ka na nga date nga mapulit ka pero sa excited ka na mapulit nakapangimos ka na and then eventually hindi paglima na yun no, i-move naman i-rebook naman kay wala flights and then I anticipate mo naman pulton mo naman another three weeks and then excited ka na mapulit Tapos, lapit nilang gig. Isa, one day before, matext naman ang, ang airport na hindi naman mo dayo ng flight. And then, next naman, may schedule naman nila. No? So, may schedule na ko. Excited ka naman mag-pull eh. May, may family, excited naman. Some of you, excited naman. Kaya sila, taka mo ba yung mga pull eh ka na? No, may health certificate ka na, may requirement ka na. No, and then, ay, wala naman na dayo. No, and then, nagsiling ko, May landa na yan. Kung mapulit, eh, pulit eh. And then, sa ang kumplito ng requirements, na-surprise ko may nagtawag sa ako, no? uh, included ka sa list, may special flight. So, RPO, nag hindi makapulit. Nag ko, no? So, ang wife ko, excited naman, RPO, nag hindi So, nag hindi preparari ang balay. Okay, nanindol sa balay, nag preparari ang 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 attic ng ng room ko dito na ko dito na ko ano yung tinet pero syempre magpuli kasi may 14 day quarantine get required again kasi so, nakabot ko sa Bacolod praise god and then like 14 day quarantine tapos may mga oh, may mga pauna una na hindi ko na maubos sa 14 day pupuliin ko muna nila after swab test so sige inambalan ko si ako ng wife no si Ice nga okay hindi din na maubos sa 14 day so prepare na da nag grocery isa na dito sa balay Tapos, excited, no? Ano nutuon tayo sa sudan? I think, grabe ka preparation, and then, hey, mapuli ka na karoon, wala ka na Japan siguro. And then, pagka next day, hey, okay na? Ano ang anong update? Wala na Japan siguro. And sometimes, na- napulitan ako siya, kaya every moment, nagapas, i-update ko, i-update ko. Because she was excited nung uh, makapulit ako, kag- makabot ako sa dala. Pero, sometimes, ano nang sa pakulot, doon nagalawi ka nagalawi. No, ako nang feeling, ano, ano, lapit ako, do galayo ako, galayo ako. No? So, but the point is, nag-abot ang time nga sila niya, nag-lisensya ako na siya nung i-share ko niya frustration. Sila niya, ay, hindi ako magluto sa dad. Hindi ako mag-expect. No? Hindi ako mag-prepare. No? So, ang muna iya nga ginabatsyag at that time. And then, one day, okay, nakapuli ko. Nakapigay 14 day na. So, nang nag-update naman sa makapuli na ako sila ko, wala Japan siguro. Kaya sa totoo, lagi wala Japan siguro. Pero mga upod ko, no, ang, ang duwa ka building ko, nag-inaahod, nakasutsos ang aga, no? Kinulbaan ang mga taos sa dalawang, nag-inaahod sila, abin, abin nila mga rally kami, no? Kaya mapulihan na kami, for 10 days na kami, tayo, virtue na kami. No, so, uh, pero ang, ang good news amon kay git papuli na kami. Papuli na kami, no? May uh, official announcement na pwede na kami mapuli. So, alas dos, no, si Councilor Rojas, no, mga today, and then, ihambal ang official announcement na pwede na kang makapulit. But of course, may, may danger man because wala pa ang result. No? So, when nabala na kami, pulit ka mga nai, hindi ka mo maglagaw, isolate ka mga nai sa inyo bala. No? But the point is, why, why did I share that? It's because my wife, no na-frustrate siya sa iya preparation. So, ang bali, hindi na ako mag-prepara, hindi na ako mag-expect. No? So, pero, sa akin, papulit na kami, why did sa kabalo, why did sa idea? Kibot lang ang harap sa kwarto. No? Gatin daw. No? <laughs> Tapos si Shana, kibot mo. <laughs> so, they were surprised. Doon kawakan ko, no? May nagsunod lang sa balay, may ginanokto ka lang I was there. Upod ko sila. So, now, as far as the second coming is concerned, doon ka muna sa picture, mga utod. No, maabot si Jesus sa, ma- sa adlaw nga wala natin gina-expect. Pero, amun isa dapat, ang ato nga, preparation. Hindi kita ma-frustrate. Ay, kadugay ka Jesus. Wala man, do wala man. Pwede na ako ma-preparar, matinamaran na ako sa Christian life. No. 
that's not an appropriate response to the coming of Jesus Christ. When you look at our passage this morning in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 1 to 13, makita natin, well in fact, chapter 3, verse 1 to 18, ang aim din ni Apostle Pedro, ang desire din ni Apostle Pedro, that while we are waiting for the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, we will be faithful. We will be faithful. Amo ang desire ni Apostle Pedro? That they will be faithful to the faith and they will be faithful to, the, to their devotion to the King. And here in our passage, ipakita sa ato ni Apostle Pedro kung ano ato ni Himuon to be faithful while we are waiting for the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Sa ato, no, isang waiting idea is passivity. Right? The hula kita gatang tangan ta, so masel punta, or we will do anything. Kag, wala. Or isa matatangan yung dagdala ta, no? Sometimes, sa mga idea of waiting ta. But in the Bible, especially here in 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 Second Peter, the idea of waiting is not passivity, but full of activity. When you remember in chapter one, gina balangte na po si Pedro, make every effort to add to your faith. So gina balangte na to make every effort, and here makita natin eventually kung ano ang gusto niya po si Pedro ng matabo sa akin. Now, kung nato nato mga otod, the Apostle Peter is nag-shift, no? nag-shift, nag-bailong iya nga tone, kag-content. When you read chapter 3, i-compare mo sa chapter 2, matingala ka siya, kag, kag, ang pag-shade na siya, ka, in a sense, dramatic. Because in chapter 2, gin-expose siya mga false teachers. Gin-expose siya ng teaching, gin-expose siya ng methods and, and, and motivation, gin-expose siya ng judgment. So the Apostle Peter was so harsh to the false teachers, wala isa sang maayo ang hinambal sila. Gin expose siya gin ang 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 ila na mga characteristics. Kung nakita natin siya, dogib ka ano nung siya, dogib ka harsh sa pag-expose ni Apostle Peter. Well, of course, he was inspired by the Spirit. No, bin tuyo yata sa balay ng Spirito. Kag nga ah, gin expose siya sa grabe ang mga false teachers because of tungod sa halit na madala nila sa simbahan. So the Apostle Peter is serious about that matter. That's why super intense ang chapter 2 ng ligat nga preaching nato. When I preach that sa, sa balay, no? sinin niya siya na, Dad, napang kid ka? So because that, that's, that's the tone of chapter 2. And kisa, tungod po sa personality, though nag, uh, nag-intense pa nga because the way I say, the say it and the way I deliver. But the point is, the Apostle Peter is serious about the false teachers. So, false teachers in the first century, gamat-amat na sila sulod sa mga simbahan, kag ang pinaka-dangerous again because they're not coming from outside the church. They are inside the church. They are insiders. They are among us. Pero grabe, nung gin-expose sa ato ni Apostle Pedro, ang ilang mga characteristics na kung magtuhaw sila sa simbahan, we can identify them immediately. We can identify them immediately. So, kung lang ito na ang heart sa ilang message, ang ilang ito, ang heart sa ilang ito, no, they do not submit to the scriptures, to the authority of scriptures, they are the authority, they deny the lordship of Jesus, and they deny the second coming of Jesus. So here in our passage, Drea, i-remind kita ni Apostle Pedro sa coming ni Jesus. Si Apostle Pedro, kung lang ito na ito, kung nagdunduman ninyo ang chapter 1 na preaching ito, 16 to 21, makita natin ang experience ni Apostol Pedro sa Mount Transfiguration. Nga mo sa diin na-experience niya, ang kag nakita niya, ang himaya ni Jesus. He saw the glimpse, no? Glimpse ng ana, hindi pag total. Kundi glimpse pa lang of what will happen to the future. What will happen to the second coming of Jesus. So nakita to ni Apostol Pedro. Kag hindi lang ang muna, in the Mount of, in the Mount of Olives, nga mo sa diin si Jesus nagtudlo sila, Gintudlo man ni Jesus sila ang second coming kung ano ang signs at kung ano mga magkalatago. Sila ni Jesus, He will come as a thief who comes at the hour when you least expect it. When, when you le- least expect it. No, so, false teachers, they are denying the second coming but this is a clear teaching of Jesus. Gintudlo gini ni Jesus sa iya mga apostles. Gintaga niya sila signs of the coming. Kagulang taon natin sa konteksto mga uturan, sa time na ni Apostle Pedro, Grabe na mga katabo niya. And I believe they're already saying, basi amo na ni, basi amo na ni. But we can all, we, baka ang balagitan na basi because we don't know the exact time. 
Ang Diyos na yung nakabalo niya. There are many people in the past na nagapit sa pizza sila. May amun yung gano'ng maabot. I remember Harold, Harold Camping na predict siya na amun yung tuwing maabot si Jesus tapos wala man. Now, kita yung mga Christian, wala kita nagpredict sa exact time, kag sa exact date na maabot si Jesus. Hindi na yung ato niya ang obligasyon. Ang obligasyon niya is to prepare and to obey the command na ginang baldri sa ato ni Apostle Pedro. Now, to make every effort to be rooted in the scriptures, to be on guard against the false teachers. Ano niya ang obligasyon ba niya? Ang obligasyon niya, hindi mag-speculate uh, saan day, kag saan tayo mga abot si Jesus. That's not our work. That's not our responsibility. That's the work of God. So we trust Him. So mga utod, grabe yung pag-change ng tone ni Apostle Pedro. I love chapter 3 because he started with the word beloved. Nakulang taon nyo sa ESV, sa itong nga naging basa kagina, no? Uli ang beloved, pero ba't in the original language, una ang beloved, kagina ang idea mong turan, it is a sharp contrast against the false teachers. Nakulang taon nyo yung mga false teachers, wala isang maayong yun ang basa po Sul Pedro sila because they are corrupt, they are wicked, they are ungodly. But here, yun ang balan po Sul Pedro, beloved, yun ang balan sa beloved, they love the people of God. He loved the people of God. He loved the church. The reason why he's making every effort, biskan palacho na si Apostle Pedro, he's still making every effort. Hindi lamang utod kay Ubray na kay Apostle sa. No. More than that, he loved the church of Jesus Christ because the church, mga utod, gin pang imatchan ni Christ Jesus. And the Apostle Peter got it. He has the responsibility. He loved the church. So grab it. He make every effort, even though his death is coming. Ginanticipate siya kaya kamatayin. Now, practically, i-highlight sa ato ni Apostle Pedro ang gusto niya matago sa ato, samtang naghula kita kay Jesus. He wants us to be faithful while we're waiting for the second coming of Jesus. That is the message for today. Peter wants us to be faithful while waiting for the second coming. Hindi ay gusto magpawala kita hindi ang gusto nga magpabayaan ang commitment na kay Lord, kundi ang gusto ni Apostol Pedro that we will be faithful. Now, paano yata gin instruct? Paano yata gin, gin, gin admonish or gin exhort sa sininga passage? Now, look with me in verse number 1. As I have said, when I said verse 1, you look verse 1. Because wala niya sa akin ng verse 1. Okay? So, look at verse 1. Ang balik ang bali sa verse 1, no? ang balik Pedro, Peter writes, This is now the second letter that I am writing to you, beloved. Or beloved. So, second letter, Grenay. Ano first letter niya? First Peter, right? Nagsulat sa first Peter, this time, this is the second letter. Sila niya, beloved, this is my second letter. Now, look at the following, the following phrase. In both of them, I am stirring up your sincere mind by way of reminder. Now, ano na sa ambut sila yun? Una mauturan sa sininga aga. Gusto ni Apostle Pedro nga maging matutong kita samtang nagahulat kita ay Kristo. Therefore, the Apostle Peter called us to remember. He, call, he, he called us to remember. Ano sa ang idea? Ang idea mo utod, he wants us to put God's word into practice. Okay? So, the Apostle Peter, kung gusto mo maging matutong samtang nagahulat ka kay Jesus, ang gusto ni Apostle Pedro, That, he, that we will put God's word into practice because that is the idea of calling God's people to remember. No? That's why sila yan, in both of them, I am stirring up your sincere mind by way of reminder. So ministry, ya, amun eh, ginapadumdum gina, gina yan, liwat ang katawan sa Diyos, ginapu, kaw niya sila. No, ginastir up niya sila, huy, huwag tao, hindi magpatulog-tulog. Hindi ka na, gusto ni Apostol Pedro, ngayon hindi kita mahulog sa spiritual lethargy. Gusto niyo yun that we will mahulog kita sa, ngayon maging inactive kita, kag, wala tayo enthusiasm sa pag-follow kay Jesus. Gusto ni Apostol Pedro that we will put God's word into practice. Did you remember chapter 1 in 2 Peter, chapter 1 verse 12? Ginambal na. Sila niya na, Therefore, I intend always to remind you of these qualities. Though you know them are established in the truth that you have, I think it is right as long as I am in this body to steer you up by way of reminder. So, gina-remind you sila, what is the idea of this of this ministry of remembrance? 
Again and again, biblical remembrance, mga utod, hindi na ni saya, pareha sa ato niya, nga may nadudumad kita, pero wala kita naghatag action. Biblical remembrance is active, is always active. Like in the Old Testament, ang bagsin kinono, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. So, may action din ang upod. No? Doon ka ngayon sa normal life na ito niya nadugduman ng birthday sa wife mo, nadugduman ng birthday sa bata mo, so naglisig mo sa action. So because you love your daughter, you love your wife, nadugduman mo, you love that person, nag-act ka, nag-prepare ka food, nag-prepare ka gift. So biblical remembrance, eh, amo na sa idea. Ang idea na gusto ni Apostle Pedro, if you want to be faithful while waiting for the coming of Jesus, you must put God's Word into practice. I-practice mo kita. I-applicar mo kita. Imo kabuhi niya. Kay dra kita mga utod na gatubo kag nagarutid kay Jesus. Kung gina-applicar natin, kung gina-practice natin ang kamaturan ng atin na batian. So, sa tutod lang yun, ang ministry of remembrance is not easy. In the church, sino may ministry of remembrance? The ministry, ang ministry of remembrance usually, kag primarily, ara sa pastor. Ang ubras ng pastor is to remind the congregation, I believe this, this thing, sige na, bago mong utod, some of them are not new. Dapat i-ano na in the past. Well, in fact, na-preach to na ang 2 Peter, I think it was five years ago, Elder Sherwin preached 2 Peter. But again and again, mga utod, importante gin, Ngayon hindi lang na-establish kita sa truth, kabalo kita sa truth, ang design ni Apostol Pedro that we will apply the truth, we will live out the truth, we will put God's Word into practice. Sa totoo lang yun, many Christians seek to avoid conflict, which is generally a good thing, except in these cases like this. In cases like this, like this one, nga ko sa diin, grabe ang spiritual danger nga present, so, ang gusto ni Apostle Pedro, taibun sila, pukawan sila. And sometimes, di natin gusto pukawan. Right? Gap, gap, tinama natin sa Christian life, hindi natin active sa Christian life, we don't read our Bible, ang atong nga church attendance, sporadic na, we come to church late, oh, ano naman, pastor, you specify mo naman, see that? So, ma- i- ma- ano ka naman, ang iyong mga ugat, ma- ano naman, masalapay naman, and then, mamalas ka na yun. And then, bawala naman sa pastor, in specify naman. Gintagan na mo example. But, but, brothers and sisters, have you ever asked yourself, why are you not drawing? Nga, wala ko gatubo man. Nga, kung gatubo, hindi man ko nga kagamay ako, kahinay ako. Nga, man. And as a pastor, I ask also myself, this coming December, we will Masalibate ka sa ato niya, 39th church anniversary. So, 39 years old na ta. And I asked myself as a pastor, why life spring is not growing? Now, I'm not just talking about numbers, but I'm talking about in the area of Christ-likeness. Because that is the, the ultimate measure of success, the area of Christ-likeness. Why? Why? Wala, wala ko gatubo. Nga, ang church wala gatubo. Have you ever asked that? Iban si nyo sa first year sang life spring ara na kamo i believe damo damo na kamo nakita no and maybe you're, you're also asking the same question ano yan ang problema no? what's the issue why you are not drawing what's the issue and maybe some of you will say pastor wala guru ga grow members kay kalaw mo preaching really if that is the case i will preach short so that you will grow pero anong garantiya ko kung ma-preach ko 20 minute sermon and na mag-grow ka Ano man ang garantiya ko kung ma-preach ko ano na mag-grow ka? What's the issue? What's the heart of the problem? When you, know, when, you, when you look at chapter 3, or when you look at chapter 3, verse 1, I discovered the issue, brothers and sisters. No wonder the apostle Peter steering him up. Hey, wake up! And this, this ministry motto, sila ni Apostle Peter, no? steering them up. You're, you're steering up your sincere mind by way of reminder. Kung ang ministry of remembrance, ang idea ni Apostle Pedro that we will put God's word into action, na put sinigod, ang pag-remind niya sa katawan sa Diyos, hindi lang na-expect sa, nga madumduman nila idea o kung ang facts o kung ang kamaturan. But the point is, the people of God will be transformed by the word of God. And that is the big issue nga makita rin natin. This is, 
The problem of the matter, the problem of our lives, my life, and the church, it's because we fail to apply God's Word in our lives. Kisa ka na, we appreciate the preaching of the Word, preach on, Pastor! And then for the next Sunday, you amo ka man dyan Why? Because we engage in the Word, pero ang Word wala na naog sa heart natin, wala na soften sa heart natin, nga nag-energize, nag-activate sa atin action. Kaya nakita, ang mabaw importante, ili ka process, sa area sa discipleship, sa area sa mentoring, nga hindi lang ang ginapass on for information, but transformation. And transformation will happen if we are engaged, kung nag-engage kita sa word, kaya hindi nga word, nagpapanaog sa atin yung heart, we are moved by the word, na-appreciate natin ang word, pero wala nag-apundo, kundi nag-move sa action. Did you remember last time? In chapter 1, in Apostle Pedro, practice these things, practice faith, practice love, practice steadfastness, practice knowledge, practice goodness, and practice Mauritia. Because you will not grow, hindi ka magtubo sa iyong pagtuo, hindi ka magtubo sa iyong knowledge of God, hindi ka magtubo sa iyong patience, sa steadfastness, kung wala mo ginapractice. Hindi ka magtubo sa iyong unconditional love, kung ang iyong husband all the time, perfect. Kada pong mga siya pinggan, perfect! Kada pamilya niya sa bayan, perfect! Mula lang niya mansaya, o mga labas yung wife na mansaya, hindi po, take mo yan. Sometimes, kita mo mga iya labanan naman yung mga yung task ka na nagkakadevelop ang yung mga patience, yung mga godly virtue. Tama mo nang gusto sa Diyos. Ang gusto sa Diyos that we will apply God's word in our lives. Ngayon, hindi lang theory, but Monday to Sunday, all the days of our lives, by God's grace, conscious kita nga nag-follow sa word of God. Na kung lang tao natin, hindi ko naging kwa ang, ang, ang God's word, nga ipot natin ang God's word into action. Again, hindi ko na ko sa chapter 1. Kaya ang iya nga, ang iya tinutuyo rin nga sa pag-remind sa ila, nga para i-practice to nila, ang mga Godly qualities, they will make every effort. Now this time, this is wonderful because ang iya reminder, gin-connect yan mga utod sa sa verse number 2. Lantawan niya ka verse number 2. That you should remember the predictions of the holy prophets and the commandment of the Lord and Savior through your apostles. Na mga utod, this is very important. Gin-step up ka sila, gin-pukaw ya sila, nga para ano? Para ang ilang action, ang ilang abuhi, mapasad sa kamaturan. Oh, ano niya kamaturan? Ang atong punong action, ang atong kabuhi everyday, mapasad sa kamaturan na ano? In verse number 2, na si Jesus mabalik li what? Because He will come again, uh, it is a great incentive or a great motivation na hindi tamang tinamahan. Mabalik sa liwat, so hindi tamang tinamahan. Kundi we will put God's word into action. I love this because the Apostle Peter said that you should remember Again, remember, but sitting on, put it into practice. Ano ginambal sa mga holy prophets? Uh, ang mga holy prophets, gin-predict nila ang first coming ni Jesus. So gin-predict nila ang first coming ni Jesus, ang pumakota mo ni, natabok ni Bala. Nag-abot ni Bala ang Kristo, ang bala sa mga ambal ni Apostle Pedro, nag-abot ni Bala. Nakita namon ang gloria. We see His power. We see His authority. And in Mount Transfiguration, we heard God the Father. And He said, This is my beloved Son. Listen to Him. Nag-abot ni ng Messiah. Truthful ni ng ginoo. Masaligan ni ng ginoo. So, mali po si Pedro, remember the predictions of the Apostle. Remember the predictions of the Holy Prophets. Remember the first time He came and remember the commandments of our Lord and Savior through your Apostles. It means, mga utod, nga mga Apostles, gintudlo man nila ang second coming ni Jesus. Because when you go to the book of Acts, when you go to the letters of the Apostle Paul, crucial na tama mga utod, ang second coming ni Jesus. Kung wala, kung kaya deny mo ang second coming ni Jesus, wala ka gospel. Ang gospel in the good news. But look, the gospel is a good news because this Jesus will come again. So, ginangot siya na ang action sa second coming ni Jesus. No wonder the Apostle Peter is making every effort. I love Peter. 
He's making also every effort. Kabi si Apostol Pedro, no? So, <laughs> we are studying the Gospel of Mark sa small group, sa one-to-one, to buy five bands, yung mga join. Nagka-amaze kami. Kaya kung si Jesus, gataas niya revelation, kung sino sa, ang mga disciples, gapanahaw. They're going down, they're going down. Ang mga ginagawa ni Jesus, wala nila gina-apply, especially Peter. They are slow, like us. Pero grabe, mga utod, no? This time, this time! The Apostle Peter! No? Sa bugay sa nino, no? Kabuya ang iya ginawali, kakabuya ang inahambal niya, gambal sa make every effort to add to your faith. Sa sunod na ginambal na doon, I'm making also every effort. The Obrano, I'm also making every effort to write these things. May i-remind ka mo. Kung lang daw na ito, hindi na kabuhay, man ang inahambal. Palat yun ka na, ang ginapaminsan mo pang ibang Japan niya tao. Hindi ko gusto matip lang ka mo. Gusto ko magtubo ka mo. What is that? Brotherly love! He's doing something good for the church. He's doing something good for the people of God. Palat yun na si Pedro, but he's still faithful to his calling. What is that? Steadfastness. And those qualities, magkita natin sa life ni Apostle Peter, he is willing to welcome death because gin-apply yan, ginambal ni Jesus. Sinin ni Jesus, yeah, Peter, you will die and you will glorify me in your death, John 21. And the Apostle Peter, this time, sinin niya, Lord, I will follow you. And he was crucified upside down. He was crucified upside down. So mga uturan, a call to remember, he calls us to put God's word into action because he will come again. Nagka-motivate ko yun sa ato, hindi ta magunta. Kabuta ng ministry sa ko, kabuta sa Christian life sa ko, kabuta mo kita concern, but he will come again. So we don't give up. We don't give up our commitment to the Lord. We don't give up our devotion, our small group, our, 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 our opportunity. Ang opportunity yun ato ng mga kuturan sa pag-alagad sa Dino, we don't give it up. Kundi kapadayon kita, kapadayon kita, kapadayon kita. We put God's word into practice. I remember a faithful expositor of God's word by the name of Alistair Begg. He said this, We find in all the scriptures, like in the Old Testament, Jesus is predicted. In the Gospels, he is revealed. In the book of Acts, he is preached. In the epistle, he is explained. And in Revelation, he is expected. He is expected to come back. So mga utod, put God's word into practice. Pagtandaan nyo kita, God's word. We trust in the authority of the holy prophets and in the commandment niya gidala sa mga apostles. Ang mga apostles, sila ang nag-preach sa church, sila ang nag-establish sa church, they are the foundation of the church, sila ang nag-preach sa aton sa gospel, sila nag-explain sa aton sa gospel. So as a church, ano nga sa liganta? Ang nga sa liganta, ang authorities and scripture, ang holy prophets, kag ang apostolic word. The apostle Peter said, remember, the prediction of the holy prophet. See, did that say, remember the prediction of a certain prophet. The word of the Lord came to me last night. Be careful. Well, this week, may gilanta ko a video ng grabe testimony. The word of the Lord came to me. And the Lord explained to me the book of Revelation. What? Gin-explain ko na sa ni, gin-explain ko na ni Jesus sa iya ang book of Revelation. Gin-isa-isa ko na gin-explain. Wow! Now listen to me. False teachers, false prophets will move you away from the holy prophets, from the true authority of God's word. Papalayon ka nila sa word of God. And they will, they want you to listen to them. Kaya si Lord ko na may direct revelation sa iya. Mga utod, wala ko direct revelation. Elder Sherwin has no direct revelation. It is all mediated by careful studying the scriptures. Kapay pa tayo sa bugay sa Diyos. Pumapatay na kami, umadulang na kami. Di. You will not say, remember the prediction of Elder Sherwin. Remember the prediction of Pastor Aaron. No! Remember the prediction of the Holy Prophets. 
and the commandment of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ through your apostles. I'm going to also repeat, and we stand on that. Ours is mediated by the word. So be careful because there are many people who will use the name of God and they will claim why direct revelation is again no. And people are following them because they have direct revelation. Kaya mga tao na nagbabasa Bible, ang mga tao kaya depende lang sila. At yano revelation ni Lord Simo. Ah, bis sa ipat pat sa mo. Oh my. Please, by God's grace. Para hindi ka matiplang, we need to be rooted in the certainty of God's word. I-apply ka na yung sakabuhita, mautod ang pulong sa iyo. I-apply ka. A call to remember. He calls us to put God's word into action. Number two, in verse three and four, a call to understand. Be alert of the fact that scoffers will come. A call to understand. Be alert of the fact that scoffers will come. Sigurado, okay, they will come. And they will rise among us. Look at verse 3 and 4. Pinambayan ni Saturn, ang rason kung nga agi na stir up ka sila, nga agi na pukaw yun sila, nga hindi ka mo magpundo. Kung di i-apply yung word para mag-draw ka mo, hindi ka mo magpundo. Go! Push! Don't stop! Look at verse 3, yan ba yan, no? Knowing this, first of all, that scoffers will come in the last, the scoffers will come in the last days with scoffing, following their own sinful desires. They will say, where is the promise that is coming? For ever since the fathers fell asleep, all things are continuing as they were from the beginning of creation. Mauto, di na, yung taha. Si, gusto ni Apostol Pedro na maging matutong kinasamta ng nulat kita ka Jesus. Ikaduwa nga gusto yung matabu sa ton. Gusto, na, gusto niya inchindi yung ta para maging alert kita sa kamaturan nga scoffers will come. Mga manong pata lang, maaaragid. No? So, mauto, yun yung mga manong pata lang, kung no, grabe nga baldri na, first of all, siya that scoffers will come in the last days with scoffing. But siya ninyo, hindi nilaglahaw ka mga manong pata lang. Dalitan din yung ang buti ninyo because scoffers, scoffing. Buti ninyo, they are good in deceiving people. So be careful. Kag ang mga false teachers po, hindi niya nga pag-abot nila yan. Palaan, hindi ka false teachers. Mapasakay ni sila. Remember last Sunday? Mapasakay ni sila. Yeah, they will also say, Jesus is Lord. They will also say, Jesus is Savior. Pero mga utod, may dugang, may mixture. May iban kag may bu- may, may iban kag may dugang. Hindi mo mention diyan mga utod, ini ang mga tao. Mapasakay man, pero eventually, they will deceive us. Well, in fact, they will say something good so that they will look they will look nice, they will look sincere. Pero ang tao natin mga utod, last days, gini pasays ni Apostle Pedro, last days, ano? Pastor, ano sa mga chilin, yung last days? Are explain ko mga utod. This is a very important idea in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. Now, when you read the Old Testament, may encounter nun is Isaiah chapter 2, verse 2, in Jeremiah 23, verse 20, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Micah. So, idea is, in the last days, the idea, ara sa Old Testament, kag-ara man sa New Testament, in Acts chapter 2, verse 17, and also in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1, sila ni Apostle, Pedro, sila ni Apostle Pablo, in Chindiano na eh. No, but understand this that in the last days they there will come in times of uh, there will come there there will come times of difficulty where people will, will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, etc. So, we na to makita mga utod nga ginampan ni Apostle Pedro in the last days, you know, false teachers false teachers will rise among us. Kaya magampan ni the last days ang muni sa ang period nga mo sa din si Cristo nagabot na. Si Kristo na patay, na ginubong na banhaw, kay nagkayag sa langit. That is referring to the first coming of Jesus. Kaya kita, kita nga mga Christians, we are living in the last days. Ibot sila yun, we are living here. Amo na first coming ni Jesus. Amo na ang last days. Aharita ni Subong, we are living between the first coming and the second coming. 
Kitana Church, we're waiting for the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Pero samtang nagawlat, kita hindi nagdaog mga utod. Because ang kamaturan that false teachers will rise among us. Kung hindi naman directly sa ating church, but they will come from Christian churches who will present something new, something exciting, something nga maka-entertain, pero mga utod, it is a waterless Waterless spring. Waterless clouds without water. There's no substance. There's no life. Because ang tutuod ka life ara sa word of God ang kabuhi. So mga utod, we are living between the first coming and the second coming and it's not easy, it's hard. We know that. We are experiencing difficulties right now. We don't know the purpose of God, why He extended this COVID-19 thing. But the point is, He will surely come. He will come, we don't know. But ang gusto ni Apostle Pedro, nga maintindihan nato, that we are in the last days, and since the last days have come, so will, so will all kinds of false teachers and false prophets and scoffers. Ari tandaan niyo kuli ah. Sa ang isulat ni Apostle Pedro, ang chapter 2. Sino ang isulatan niya? Hindi lang specifically ang mga pastors. As I have said last time, it is the responsibility of the pastors to spot the false teachers. But the Apostle Peter did not say that. Even though I can justify that it is our work as pastors to shepherd because we are shepherds. Pero sa isulat ni Apostle Pedro, ginaddress siya generally sa church. But sa lingon, ikaw kag ako. Nagabuligay kita, nagahalong kita. We are on guard. We are alert of the coming of the false teachers. If that person, even those in Oman as a church, if that person ginapapalayo yung sa word of God, beware. If that person may natulong hindi mo wala na pasad sa Biblia, beware. You rebuke that person. We will rebuke that person if that person will lead us away from the truth, away from the word of God. Pag pwede mga utod, nga ay chindiyon tala sila, because ang attack nila, ang gina-attack nila ang hearts ang gospel. Kid. Where is the promise of His coming? But sila nga mga utod, they deny the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Gina, kay hindi na nga gina-deny, but they are also mocking the Christians. Where is the promise of His coming? For ever since the Father fell asleep, all things are continuing as they were from the beginning of creation. So these false teachers, they attack the gospel. They attack the gospel. Why? Because they deny the second coming. If you deny the second coming, what will happen to the first coming? Mautod, the gospel, in ang gospel, hindi niya sa gospel. Because, kung tuod ang hinamba sa mga false teachers, hindi sa magbalik, Kaya hindi sa magbalik, wala judgment. Kaya wala judgment. Pwede takap ang gusto. So, kung hindi sa magbalik, wala judgment, nga rin pa tayo church. Why we are still devoted to Him after all, hindi man sa galing magbalik? If that is true, but the point, brothers and sisters, He will come. Kag-amuni sa ang ginadinay sa mga false teachers. Kung lang tawag mo sa Bible, no, gini-establish ni Jesus Christ ang kingdom. Matthew chapter 1 verse 15, sila ni Jesus Christ, the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. Peter was there. Sa first, sa, sa first three years of ministry ni Jesus, anak ko si Apostle Pedro, nakita yung authority, nakita yung power ni Jesus, kung paano niya gini-establish ang kingdom niya. Nakita yung four days of glory. And we know what happened to Christ. Christ was crucified. He died on the cross for our sins. He rose again from the dead. And then he ascended He ascended up to heaven after 40 days. And the Bible says he will come again. He will restore the eternal kingdom. But the false teachers, they deny this. They deny this truth. That he will come again. There is no second coming. Where is the promise of his coming? Why was it Japan? Nagulan daw natin sa time sa mga apostles, especially sa time ni Apostle Pedro, he is already preaching the second coming of Jesus for si Jesus, wala dyan po nang abot. 
Ang mga apostles nagkalamatay na because of persecution. Grabe nila against sa mga Christians. Nagkalamatay ng mga apostles ng iban. Nagkalamatay ng iba niya Christians. And they and, and I believe they're already saying, Amo na ni, Amo na ni, Amo na ni, Lapit na lang ka Lord, magbalik, magbalik Lord. Pero wala ng Japon. Ang mga post ni Church, ginamak nila ang preaching of the gospel. Hindi na lang magbalik. Where is the promise that is coming? This world will be forever. No one will intervene. So let's eat, drink, and tomorrow we will eat, drink. And then tomorrow, our life will be the same. We will go this to this, go and party, party. This is all about us. Ang muna kita promote sa mga false teachers, brothers and sisters. Mga false teachers, nga iban, they will also affirm Jesus. They will also say, nga nagabilib sila sa Bible, but they will promote prosperity. You know what? Ang desire si Nino ay bless ka materially. This is your best life. Your best life is now. Take it out. No? Ang desire si Nino o mas maging healthy ka. Ang desire si Nino maging prosperous ka. So don't you ever doubt to send your money to me because I will pray for you. If you will send your money to me, I will pray for you and you will be lifted sa iyong mga poverty at the end of the day, sa iyong kapangaranon. Ang false teacher. Ikaw ang nagatag for 20 years, pigado, manjapon. Again and again, wala nag-promise ang ginawa. You know, material blessing. Masalamat kita, kinabless kita ni Lord materially, but this, but may purpose na. And it is all for the kingdom of God. I remember this quotation when I was in the Bible school, in the library, I'm going to strike sa akin. Kaya sa subo, hindi ko na malipatan. Ang ining idea, ang ining kapaturan, He who prepares for this life and not for eternity is wise for a moment but fool forever. He who prepares for this life and not for eternity is wise for a moment but full forever. So mga utawran, we are here and we must prepare for eternity. We put God's word into practice. We understand that false teachers will come, so we, we are alert. Forever since the fathers fell asleep, all things are continuing as they were from the beginning. No, anong punto nila? Ang punto sa mga manugpata lang, ang ila gina-assume, nga ang, ang pagtugas sa Diyos sa kalibutan, in ang kalibutan, this will be forever. There will be no coming judgment, this will be forever. Again, ang baka namin, magsila, naging quote pa nila ang mga patriarchs, no? ang mga forefathers. As I have said, false teachers will also use God's word. Pero ni muna, they will twist the word in their own purpose. That's why he encounters the Apostle Pedro in verses 5 and 6. Look at 5 and 6. Ang bandira, ginbalik sila sa creation, kag sa flood. Look at verse 5 and 6. For they deliberately overlook this fact. Bawa ang mga manong patalang, intentionally, they overlook this fact. Ang buti ngayon, kabalo sila na may coming judgment, but they are denying it. They overlook this fact that the heavens existed long ago and the earth was formed out of water and through water by the word of God. And by means of this, the world that then existed was deluged with water and perished. No, Pastor, no, kadalo, ano sa idea? Ang idea, makuto na muna. Ginbalik kita ni Pedro sa creation. Nga sa creation, nagambal ang Diyos. Grabe nyo, and, and God said, and it was so. God said, and it was so. God said, and it was so. The word of God is certain and powerful. Tapos nga ba lang, you know, I will judge the world. Because when, we, when you remember the story in the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 3, nahulog ang tao sa sala, and because of that, and because of that, grabe mong tulad ang pag, grabe ang depravity sa tao, grabe ang sala sa tao. In Genesis chapter 6, God said, and God saw the wickedness of man was so great. Kaganong ano ang batsang Diyos, I will destroy them. 
So nung ginig mo sa ino, may pinatawag kita nga Noah's Flood. So at the creation, we have Noah's Flood. So may flood. Nagpadalang ino flood, yung gamit sa si Noah. Pero si Noah ay handled of righteousness, gindiklik, nagproclaim si Noah judgment. But people are not listening. They eat, drink, marry, nagawlagaw din everything. They are not paying attention to the preaching of the word. Kaya pinila ng judgment. Baha, ano na yung tsura baha man? But Noah was obedient and he proclaimed the message and you know the story. You know what happened in, in, in Genesis. Ano tabo? Nagulan to do, kag nagbaha, kag ginwash out ang tao sa kalibutan, ang nabilin lagi ang family ni Noah. Masugot iwat ang Diyos, ang bago nga generation. Pero mga utod, after that, si Noah nakasalat ng Japan, and we know what happened. We know that sa dalagan sa story, people are still the same. But God has a people for Himself. May katawan din ang Diyos yung ina-preserve as tas uli ma-fulfill ang promise niya na maabot din ang Messiah na si Jesus Christ. That's why we look at verse 7, gina-deny ni nilang coming judgment na natabu in the past. Kung natabu ni in the past, kag ang Diyos truthful siya pulong, na in verse number 7, hampal ang Pastor Pedro, but by the same word, the heavens and the earth that now, now exist, are stored up for fire, being kept until the day of judgment and the, dis- and the destruction of the ungodly. Mutsling ang makuturan, kung natabu ang judgment in the past, by God's word, masaligan, tapay na hinahambal sa pulong sa Diyos, paagi sa mga apostles, that there will be coming judgment. In the time of Noah, may covenant ang ginoo, right? May rainbow, that I will not judge the world by water anymore, pero wala hinahambalan si Noah na i-judge siya kalibutan in the future by fire and he will recreate the world, the new heavens and the new earth where the righteousness dwells. So mga utod, in the beginning, God created the world by his creative word. And at some point, when humanity sin grew great, he destroyed the world with, flood, with a flood. And he is going to destroy it yet again by fire before ushering a new heavens and new earth. Sunugun sa Diyos ang kalibutan, mga kapuran. This is not a joke. This is not dinialog lahog. This is true. These things will happen in the future. We don't know when it can be. After one hour, tomorrow, we don't know. Because the coming of Jesus is like a thief in the night. Pero grabe, mga utod, no? The fire of God's wrath will purge all traces of sin and, and from the earth. The logic of Peter's argument is this. Jesus is, to, is coming, then there will be a final judgment. Hukman niya ang mga malaot. Hukman niya mga malaot. Kag i-preserve yan iya katawan. Nga ini yung mga katawan, so na malaot man, pero ginbugayan lang. Gingrasyahan lang. Huwag ka muna tandogs na. Naging grasahan ka sa Diyos. Mag-abot ang judgment day. We will be willing. No? We will be willing to bow down before the presence of the King. Pero ang mga nagatampalas kay Jesus, ang mga gadinay kay Jesus, matunaw sa mga utod. Bukun na ilang mga tuhod. They will worship the King bisa hindi nila gusto. Why? Because Jesus is the Lord of Lords and the King of kings. Finally, when you look at verse 8, a call to remember, a call to, uh, to understand, a call to knowledge. And this call to knowledge, ang punto ni Apostle Pedro, that we will trust the promise of His coming. We will trust the promise of His coming. Look at verse 8, a call to knowledge. Peter again speaks affectionately to his readers. Mga hinigugma. No? Sila ni Apostle Pedro, but do not overlook this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. Ano na sa nabot sila yung mga? Mga utod na nabot sila yung mga sila. 
God, God's time is His time, not ours. He does not count the days and the hours as we do. So much lingon nga ang ginuuya, He is eternal. He is not tied by human time. He transcends time. That's the meaning of that. So much lingon mga utod, because the Lord has not yet returned, does that mean that He will not come? Ni much lingon nga wala pa sa nakabot, hindi sa magbalik. God has His own time. Kaya ang ginatudlo sa aton sa second coming, sa second coming, ginatudlo sa aton ang Lordship ni Jesus Christ. Siya ang Diyos. Siya ang nagkakontrolar sa tanan. He, is, he has sovereign control over all things. He is the Lord of history. Siya ang nagkaguide sa mga nagkakalatabo sa kalibutan, ang process, ang ilang mga purposes, even though hindi naman sa upward for more than 2,000 years, but the sovereign Christ is in control. He is on His throne and is doing good for the sake of His church. And even in this, even the discovered thing, mga utod, wala ni naglapaw sa kamot sa ato na Diyos. He controls these things, mga utod. Maybe damo na epektuan, damo ng kalamatay, but on the other side, Damo man nakakilala kay Jesus. Damo man nakarealize na ang Diyos nag-intervene, there will be a coming judgment. And this is a form of God's judgment to the world. And in the case of the believers, this is one way na kung sa diin kina luat sa Diyos ang ugat ni sa kalibutan. There are many Christians I will not talk about other churches. I will talk about us. Up there like that. Mga hinigugma. Amo na yung tono. Hindi ka pang akin. Mga hinigugma. Bawa. Ginalukat sa Diyos ang atong ugat. Why? Because this is not our home. Hindi ni nga atong balay. Yes, we praise God. Ito tagang kita balay. Ito tagang kita snap. Ito tagang kita family. Yes, we praise the Lord for that. But this is not our home. Ang home na tumong tunala sa palabuton, the best is yet to come, whose builder and maker is God. So mga utod, a call to knowledge. Peter wants us to trust the promise of His coming. Maabot git si Jesus. Now look at verse 9. Anong rason nga ang ah, it seems nga daw delay ang kaang ribalik ni Jesus? Oh? Na verse 9, ang bagay no? The Lord is not slow to fulfill His promise. The Lord you know, is not slow to fulfill His promise as some count slowness. But is patient toward you. Grabe yung heart sa gino, no? So, ang delay sa gino, ang seeming delay sa gino, mga utod, This is God's way. No, di, ginapakita niya sa aton. This is deliberate. And this is God's way of showing His patience and, and forbearance to His people. I find this passage difficult. Pero tawa niyo kang hearts ang ginawa. No? He is patient toward you. Not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach Repentance. Now, hina, yung tabla mga utod. Kung lang tao natin mga uturan, sa Matthew chapter 4, 24, verse 14, one of the signs of the end of the age is that the gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. No, ang gospel ko naman, preach to all nations, and then the end will come. No, ang promise ang ino ma-fulfill, si Jesus mabalik, when the gospel has been preached to all nations. No, kung mawali ang gospel, kag makabati ang iya katawan in every tribe, every nation, every tongue, then the end will come. Now, kung lang tawin natin mga utod, sila isang passage, no? Nga, adilay ang ginawaw. No, kung lang tawin natin, nga, kaslawaw. Where is the promise of His coming? Ginamaksa sa mga false teachers. Pero ginig-explain ka rin sa Apostle Pedro. 
na tumut in isang forbearance, minusagtag sa patience, you know, he is not wishing that any of you, no, any, any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. Nang pumangkot, sino ni isang all, pag sino siya yung nambalan, he is patient toward you. Right? So, but sino yung grabe patient sa ino, oh, sa ila. Sino niya, sino niya sila? Ang ginsulatan ni Apostle Pedro. Okay? Sino ang ginsulatan niya? Ang ginsulatan niya, kung balikan mo chapter 1 sa 2 Peter, ang mga tao nga nakaobtain sa pagtuo equal standing with ours by the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ. Sina ni ginsulatan, He is patient toward you. Now, kung balikan nato ng 1 Peter, sino ni sila? Iyan ba niya pag no? Sa 2 Peter, sa 1 Peter, chapter 1, ang balik na, no? Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ to those who are elect exiles of the dispersion of Pontos, Galatia, Cappadocia, Bithynia, verse 2 lang tawa nyo, according to the foreknowledge of God the Father in the sanctification of the Spirit for obedience to Jesus Christ for and for the sprinkling of His blood. So, but you know, in ng mga tao, no? He is patient toward you. These people are God's elect. So God is patient toward His people. That's why wala pa nalambot ang ibang sa gospel. Mga, mga kuturan, ang Diyos may katauhan na iya. We don't know who they are. May tanong tanan na elect, may alam sa guya, kaya po sa identify But we don't know the elect. Our task is simply to preach the gospel, to share the gospel to anyone. We proclaim it openly to anyone. And the God's people will respond to the word. He is patient toward you. He is patient towards his people, not wishing that any should perish. But all should reach repentance. Ng iya katauhan, ang iya elect will reach repentance. And then the end will come. So, kung nantaw natin, mga utod, grabe, no? Understand it. Trust the promise of His coming. If you trust the second coming, it will also encourage you to do evangelism. Oh God, please help us. May makabalik kami, Lord, sa evangelism that we will be more zealous in sharing the gospel to others. This blessed assurance yung inakanta na naman, we will tell this story to others. He will come again. So the reason why wala pa nagbalik because, wow, he is very patient. Try to imagine your baliksa before your conversion. What is there for me? But God is in control. He is sovereign. He knows what He's doing. I just praise Him. I just honor Him because Gin palangga ko sa Diyos before the foundation of the world. Ang balaan ng Espiritu, Gin pahain niya ko. Sa kadamunta ako sa tao sa Bacolod, Gin pahain niya ko. Gin pangimachan ko ni Jesus. Kang nagabot ang tiyon, the Holy Spirit worked in my life. In His great mercy, I was born again from darkness to light, from Adam to Christ. Thank you, Lord. I want to tell the story to others. Please, Lord, help us. This is very, very important, mga Turan. When they, sa nga kami sa Global Summit, no? When, sa nga kami sa Global Summit, yung challenge yung isang, yung challenge yung isang, Speaker, some preacher. When was the last time, Pastor, you shared the gospel to others? Pisa na, amin ka tamag palpag sa pulpet. You go, you do evangelism. Pero si Pastor, wala nag do evangelism. And that is a great rebuke to all of us. That's why when I, I went home, I said to the Lord, how can I share the gospel to others? Gabi nga si Pastor Lord, social distancing, may tabo niya ng baba. How can I share the gospel? And then, I praise the Lord. Isang nagkakwarantin kami di sa Bacolod, no? May roommate ka. Well, praise God, they have the opportunity to share the word of God. No? Wala man sila na say, wala man sila na convert, but I just praise God that the word of God was preached, nakatanong sa seed, and may the good Lord work in their hearts someday. Our task is simply to share the word. Our task is simply to herald the gospel. Pastor, hindi ko ba lang mag-share sa word? Hindi ko ba lang mag-share sa gospel? Ay, tiksi ko, tawagi ko. Ang muna ang ginamba ko sa inyo. I'm willing to sit down. Pero tiwala man. 
Alam ng piliton, baka mula niya pilitan ng utod kung sino lang willing magkato sa small group, kung sino willing mag magtuon sa Bible, then you come. If you need it, if you want to be faithful, if you want to be used by God, then let's do it. Because we believe that He will come, He will surely come. And look at verse 10, finally. The Bible says the day of the Lord will come like a thief. Did you see that? He will come many time. We don't know when, but He will surely come. And we want to be found faithful. Amen? And I believe you put God's word into practice. You are discerning. You are alert. You don't drift away from the word of God. And you trust the promise of His coming. To bring others to Jesus. Because there will be coming judgment. There will be coming judgment. And the Bible says, God will burn the world. When in fact, when you go to when you go to the Old Testament, the Mutamu description ng Gino, ng mga prophets about the coming judgment, about fire. When you go to the New Testament, sa baba ni Jesus mismo na galing, kung ano ang impyerno. It is a place of torment where the, where, where the fire, the, where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. May paghukum mga kuturan. If you are not in Christ, you will be judged forever in eternity. Because we have friends, we have family, we have not met with Jesus. So we pray for them, we share the gospel to them, we live a godly life. Important We must make every effort to live a godly life because they need it. Kaga mo na sa ang greatest contribution mo sa evangelization of the world ang imo kabuhi. As I have said last time, we don't need. We don't need we don't need new definition of Christianity. We need new demonstration of Christianity. If you're living a godly life, it is an, an opportunity that people will come to you. Why are you so joyful? Why are you still confident? Why are you still stable? Why are you still stable? Problema sa wala, problema sa to, pagtubang mo sa sphere, problema mo kung kagulingan mo. Why are you still composed? I have hope. I have a blessed hope. My King, Jesus, will come again. Look at the judgment. The heavens will pass away with a roar. And the heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved. And the earth and the works that are done on it will be exposed. Look at the description. There will be fire. Kita mo na sang magdabo kakalayo. No? Kahoy na. Shhh. Gali na gaka. No? That will be the sound. And that is very terrifying. Because the wrath of God. Mga kauturan. Hindi lawlaw mga kautod. Jesus Christ described it. Grabbing a darkness, grabbing a, a gali Jesus. Well, in fact, Jesus Christ said, My God, my God, why thou hast forsaken me? He was forsaken by the Father because when he was there on the cross, he dalayang imo sa la, kagapang sa la. Siya nag absorb some judgment nga matupa sa ato, nang fire ng tupa kay Jesus. The wrath of God nag tupa siya ng utod, and praise God na ubiran tada because we put our faith in Jesus. But listen, those nga wala na kuberan sa righteousness ni Jesus will face the wrath of God. And sometimes, ga, 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 think, you know, Lord, ikaw ang galuwa sa akong bata. Lord, I'm praying for my daughter that someday makilala si Jesus nga tutuod. Makilala si Jesus nga iya Savior and Lord. That the Lord will use those Bible stories are children nga hindi makasimba sa church but they are in their house natuluan sila weakness ato nga mga 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 teacher mommy and teacher daddy about the word of God we're praying that the Lord will use those Bible stories nga makakilala sila kay Jesus na one time nang bisita ko kay si Sir Jinky na nag-pray si Chad sila ni Chad Lord give me power like Elijah and one, one time, nag-storytelling ko sa bata, ako nag-igda kami, no? 
sa si Jesus Christ o po di ayaman disciples sa boat and kung mag story kami nga naman tindun nasa din stop and then ang pansin din okay Barbie naman <laughs> mga kuturan dyan lang tas ta next Sunday we will continue our study but the Apostle Peter wants us to be faithful while we're waiting for the second coming of Jesus he wants us to put God's word into practice he wants us to to be alert of the coming of the false teachers and he wants us to trust the promise of the coming of Jesus Christ no matter what no matter what so mga utod shall we all rise Let's have a moment of silence. One day, the trumpet will sound for His coming. One day, the skies with His glories will shine. Wonderful day, my beloved one's bringing glorious Savior, this Jesus. It's mine.